bit. Ali Khan speaks. He did a, he did one on Holy Spirit. Who's that? Um, have you seen this video just for, for your research purposes? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Um, it's like Quran speaks. Um, Holy Spirit. Quran speaks. Holy what is it? Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. So it's a YouTube video. Yeah, the Holy Spirit. Oh, this Quran. guy. Yeah. I know this guy. What's his so name? Uh, Shabir. Shabir Ali. Shabir Ali. Yeah. So, uh, check out the video. Um, okay. Why don't you email it to me when you you have my email now? Oh, okay. Just yeah, send, send it to it me on email. Now. I'll check it out. Yeah. Okay. No, he's. Uh, huh? No, he's uh, talking about uh, Shabir Ali. He's uh, one of the Muslim debaters and uh, uh, he's a scholar. So he said he made a video about Holy Spirit. But you watched, you watched that video, so this Holy Spirit video. Can you summarize it for me right now, since we are on camera anyways? Maybe they'll be worth some, uh, uh, maybe I, it'll help me to see what the... What would you summarize so his... Like, uh, what, a year ago I saw it. Yeah. Um, but he basically says it's ambiguous. It's ambiguous. So it can refer to Gabriel, or it may refer to someone else. Someone like else, an, but he didn't specify creation. who, what that creation might be because... It's a mystery. It says it's like a, a, a enigma. It's a mis okay. mis mystery. A mystery. Yeah. I see. Okay. Because the, in the Bible, it's not a mystery or anything. It just says Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. So, um, but and then the, Quran, the Holy Spirit is God. Yes, because it's coming from God. So, and it's holy. You see, the thing is that you guys but throw you, around this holy you term. Are from God. Sorry. You, you are also from God. A child is from God. Oh, I and see. A child is holy oh, I see. I see. I see. Okay. But, uh, so it's from the essence of God, meaning that um, without the Holy Spirit, the the disciples could not do what they did after they received the Holy before they received the Holy Spirit they were in hiding they were uh, afraid for their lives and stuff like that and they didn't have the boldness and and also they didn't speak in tongues because of the Holy Spirit they, they got all this stuff and also it says it will remind you of everything that I've said to you yeah. so it kind of like a, a spirit, it's like the power of God the coming essence, on to them it, does it say in the New Testament that he's of the same essence as the Father and the Son because it says it comes from the Father okay okay I'll send it to you from the Father. The essence is that used in the New Testament. No, no neither is Tawheed used in your Quran, but you still yeah. believe in it, it, right? It appears in the Hadith. Like but then a lot of people, people I was just Tawheed having conversation, they say, Tawheed. well, Hadith is not written by God, Hadith is written by man, yeah, it can no, be right, no it can be wrong. Hadith is written by God. Well, then, then, then you cannot make the like point that tradition. Hadith is at the equal to the Bible or the what's written in the Bible. If the Bible is saying that is coming from God and Jesus is saying, I will send it to you. First of all, there's two deities involved. Oh, good. How are you? Thank you. Hello to you. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. I was just making a video, actually. I'm just talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Where in the Bible does it say the Bible is from God? Where in the Bible does it say the Bible is from God? It does. You know what? You caught me off guard. I know that. Does is that it um, 1 Timothy 3:16 about all um, scripture inspired? Yeah, all scripture is from the uh, yeah. inspire inspiration so of God. So that uh, wouldn't include the New Testament because the New Testament wasn't written yet. Ah, uh, uh, that's Paul right. That's Timothy. right. That's right. So now let me ask. Uh, that's a good point you brought up. So uh, the New Testament was not written until until the disciples received the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, right? So and, on Pentecost, then, once they received the Holy Spirit, let me see that, then they are like under God, meaning that they are under the Spirit of God, which reminds them of everything that happened and everything that Jesus said. You don't have that concept in your Quran, which you should because you guys are very oral. You guys say, well, we have the oral tradition, but nowhere in the Quran does it say that all these people, now you say, oh, Sahaba wrote it down. Wait a minute. Who collected the does, uh, does Quran from Sahaba? Oh, uh, Ali's uh, Zaid did. Was Zaid, does it ever say that Zaid was under the influence of the Holy Spirit? No, he doesn't. In the Bible, it's the opposite. It says these people are doing this under God, meaning under the Spirit of God. Paul, Paul, Paul says, for example, um, in like Second Corinthians, yeah. uh, chapter eleven and chapter twelve, yeah. where he's where he's very angry, and he's angry throughout the uh, for, for two whole chapters roughly. Uh, but but in the end, he says it wasn't the Holy Spirit that made him angry, but or or, or, or that provoked him. 
but what provoked him was the Corinthians. The Corinthians provoked him yeah. to write this letter yeah. um, out of anger. Yeah. So Paul's not claiming inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Mm. And even the author Luke says that it seemed good to me also, you know, to write an orderly or more accurate account mm -hmm. of, of what was fulfilled amongst us. I uh, suppose not claiming like inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Mm. Um, the, the closest is, you know, First Peter uh, three sixteen. You know, First Peter chapter three verse one. It said men were moved and they were carried by the Holy Spirit and right. they spoke. Right. But between them prophesying or speaking and writing scripture, there's like a gap. So you don't have to state that you're under inspiration to, to be under inspiration. I mean, even in the human sense, you can feel sad one day and like write a song inspired by the sadness. So what we would hold is that even if... You wouldn't say it's the word of God. Well, what we would hold is this. Since Paul had the Spirit, and he was angry at the Corinthian church, and he was writing to advise on the things of God, that somehow in his anger, the Holy Spirit is still capable of having him write things that are righteously just with towards the Corinthian church. So that, that's, that's why you don't see him like swearing at them, telling them that they're all well, burning he, hell. He, he so. does call them foolish. But, which, which, which is fine. Because what even God, Jesus says in Matthew, not to become angry with your brother, do not say fool. By right, there, but he's correcting them. them. He's correcting them. He, he isn't simply calling them fools. Even in the Old Testament, God calls the Jews stiff necks. So mm -hmm. like God, God can certainly chastise people, but is he doing it because... So do you believe he, Paul is like writing verbal dictation? Like verbatim, like the word of God. No, or no, we don't still, believe that. No, we it, don't. It, believe no, that. Not, not in the way of a wahi. Not, no. not in the way of a wahi. He's saying verbatim. No. Yeah, verbatim. Yeah, yeah. No. no, it's not so, verbatim. So, so no. here, Paul is calling them you, you fools. Yes. Like you made me angry. Yes. Which is fine. He can do that as long as it's for a purpose to correct them, as opposed to just insulting them for the sake of it. Because I mean, doesn't it like in the sermon it says like not to become angry with your brother? You know, if I say like that says, people who don't believe in God are fools, you know, not to believe in him is it because I, I'm, I'm cursing them or something I'm just saying they're foolish right but if I just say oh you're a damn fool do you see the difference there ha, if I say them? these people are damn fools that's a different that's cursing them but if I said it's foolish to not believe in God that's not cursing them that's just describing what they well, are well, Paul admits that he was wrong to do so because hmm. he says I have been a fool and you forced me to do it for I ought to have commended by I, I, I ought to have been commended by you. For I, I was not, not at inferior all inferior to these here, even though I am nothing. nothing. The signs of the sorry, what, 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 is, what is the verb? Is that sorry? So, so Paul basically was saying stuff about the Corinthians, which yes. he later on regrets. But he says that you forced me to it. Okay. So like he, the same second Corinthians. But he doesn't regret what he wrote. He might regret being angry at them, but not what he wrote, because what he wrote was needed for correction. So you can't regret correcting something. There were things that were wrong with the Corinthian church, so he it's was... I've been a fool for saying all of this. Okay. It's a matter of speaking, so you know. Said, I have been a fool, you forced me to it, for I ought to have been commended by you. For I was not at all inferior to those super apostles, uh, even though I am nothing. I mean, I, I so don't. What he said before or previously wasn't under by the Holy Spirit. I don't and think that's what he said. And he says, okay, he, can we read the passage do before? I don't then. think that's what he said. Let's read this passage here then, uh, just okay. to get some context. From, because he could have said, I, I have been a fool in what I wrote. Mm -hmm. I, I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to the visions and revelation of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know, God knows. So again, he's claiming not to be inspired, but he's claiming something that only God that's knows. Not claiming, that's not a negation of inspiration, man. That's not a negation of inspiration. Well, it says, I do not know, but God knows. Um, that doesn't mean that he wasn't inspired. So, okay. like, inspiration okay. happens passively, not, not actively. And, and I know that this man was caught up in paradise, whether in body or out of body, I do not know, God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may See not utter on behalf of this man. Corinthians, I will go on my own behalf, oh, I will that. not yeah. boast, except you see the bright my light witness. on my face. Yeah. Though if I should wish to boast, um, I wouldn't be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think 
more of me than he sees in me or has for me. So to keep me from becoming defeated because of the surpassing greatness of revelation, a form was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to harass me, to keep me from becoming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. Yep. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for the power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then I am I am content with weakness, insult, hardship, persecution, calamity. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have been a fool, you forced me to it. And for I have been commanded. For, for I also have been, been, been commanded by you. Commanded by you. So by you. For I, I was not all that inferior to those super apostles, even though I am nothing. These signs of the true apostle were performed among with among you, uh, with the utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. For in what uh, were you less favored? Please uh, uh, have a conversation with us. I myself may not burden you. Uh, forgive me this wrong. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean fair, fair enough. Like maybe he's. So just, what's the main uh, it, it objection? It's not like, like he's saying that like maybe I, I was too harsh with you guys. And he's okay. Just reflecting that in, in his right. so, so speaking. Right. But that has nothing to do with the fact that he wasn't inspired. Right. Right. Like, right. Inspiration is not an active process. Yeah. Uh, Lazy. Inspiration, by the way, isn't like, like a wahi. It's not like like God like direct. So like for example, we have like okay. Isaiah, right? Uh, Ezekiel. Those are like like wahis. It's, it's like God directly talking to people and showing them things, right? But in this instance, when we say inspiration, we simply mean through the emotion that's being invoked, right. God can still talk. Once you're finished, sorry, I want to say something. You know, our New Testament has all your different hadiths. Your Quran is in there. Your hadith and your tafsir are in our New Testament. The red letters are hadith, meaning the wording of Jesus, what Jesus said, right? And then the Acts, the book of Acts, is like your, uh, you know, what he did and everything. It's Sunnah or something, right? Sarah, uh, Sira, Sira, Sira. The biography. Okay, biography. And then, so there is all these things that are all in one in the New Testament, but they're very sm short compared to what you have. But they're all there. So if you want to look at the New Testament in the way that we look at it, you should look at it the way you look at your tafsirs and your sunnah and all these other things. So these I are do, the way. I do try to. Yeah. That's right. So and, and when you look at it that way, and if you say, well, where is God speaking? That's the red letter wording. That's so, Jesus speaking. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, in general, hadiths are said to be more reliable than the Sirah literature. Now, I have so a very big general, problem the, there. The I'm going to come to that. Jesus in the Bible. Say that again. The word words of Jesus yeah. in the Bible will be more authoritative than compared to like other words. From That's Bible. right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Fine. So, but you do believe in hadiths, don't you? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Fine. Now I got a question here because the thing is, our hadith is in the New Testament. And it's very close to the life of Jesus, whereas your hadith is hundreds of years after Muhammad. Not true. And you don't have any problem with that. No, not true. But there's earlier works that were done prior. To, okay. Like, Let me ask you something. Okay. Famous collection. So then I'm going to ask like you this. Like the Muwatta Sulaiman Malik, for example. There's also the uh, the scrolls of the Harbin Muhammad who was a student of Abu Huraira. Huraira, right? Yeah. Okay. So when was so which is the Sahih Hadith, the Sahih Muslim Bukhari, right? So those part of the collection, but yeah. the other collection. Yes, before. but when were they collected? When who did it? I don't know the exact date, but it's roughly... Um, These are 200 years after, yeah, but they came 200 years after. Mm -hmm. okay. And you call them Sahih? Yeah. Okay, and you trust them? No. But then you I mean, object to us trusting the New brain. Testament that was written right after Jesus so, so look, You know what we just read in Corinthians? Yeah. I do believe those are the words of Paul. So yeah. I do believe Paul did write But I'm not saying these are... Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh, he's let me he's speaking as a historian. He's speaking as like an ordinary human being. That could, um, uh, you can say it like, a, like, yeah. it's a, like a hadith. It's like a hadith where he's saying to the churches, these are what the things that you are doing wrong. I have a problem with these things, you know. And then he's explaining to them. He's like, he's like, he's a very, he was a Pharisee. Mm -hmm. He's a very highly educated man, very intellectual person. So he had the 
knowledge of the Judaism. So he knew what they were doing, what they were thinking, what they were saying, and he could then counter their arguments with his argument. So a lot of these letters are trying to convince them that, hey, listen, this is wrong because this is what we believe in. But Don't so, follow some, this. Sometimes Paul speaks and not, not God, and sometimes he claims God is speaking. And, and like in God. your hadith, so, so let's compare it to your hadith. Well, with the hadith, no one's not saying it's scripture. That's fine, that's fine. Like, uh, we're not saying it's the word of God. No, we are not saying that too. They, listen, we don't say that. Can we say Christians is the word of God? Say Christians is the word of God because it's part of the Bible. No, we say it's inspired word that Paul wrote down. Would you put the Bible the word of God? Inspired word of God. We don't say the word of God. What is in it, like the red letters, is the word of God because that's the word Jesus spoke, right? And, that's, and it's very simple and I'm glad that we're doing this video because a lot of Muslims have a misconception about the New Testament. Oh, it's the word of God. No, it's the inspired word of God, just like you have hadith and you say, no, it's not the word of God, but it's the what Muhammad was saying and this and that. And now, those all things are all in one in our New Testament. The book of the, the Acts is telling you what they did and all that stuff. So these are things that you have as well, but you have it in a separate way. So you're trying to compare like apples for apples for Christianity and Islam. It doesn't work like that. Christianity and Islam can never be apples and apples. Right? Yeah, so you know when you say inspired, are you saying it's 100% the inspired word of God? No, man. That's called apples and apples. Because do you have any word of uh, God in Hadith? Are the words of Muhammad not from God? So the Quran is called. Are you saying that Muhammad spoke without God's the inspiration? Hadith quotes Quran, which is the direct word of God. Um, but Hadith but also quotes of Muhammad, right? Um, and Muhammad was a prophet of God, right? It paraphrases like what the prophet said. So it's a more hadith. Oh no! Like a lot of times, hadith would say, "I heard this and that." Or, or let's take for example, in the hadith of uh, Al Bukhari, Aisha is saying, "I heard the prophet say this," mm -hmm. right? But you're, you're right? given the meaning. So if you hear the prophet saying something, the, yeah. that means you got it from the prophet. So if the Prophet is from Allah, that the Prophet is speaking about what Allah is inspiring him to speak, right? He's the Prophet of Allah. He's speaking what God wants him to say. So in a way, that's a sacred word because that hadith then becomes the God of Allah. Word of Allah because it's the word of Allah. It reports what people reported, like what they saw or heard the messenger say. Look, if you are the Prophet and I say, I heard Nas say this and this. You have to independently compare the hadith with other evidence whether it corroborates so when it when it corroborates like word for word and it's identical um, then we can be more confident that the prophet said this that these are like this, this speech of Muhammad you know this like something like I ratio, think about this and I say oh, wait a minute say, so what you're you're throwing a wrench in your own philosophy by saying something like that because you're saying you know not everything that we have is accurate there's quite a room for for uh, doubt here, so well, who says hadith one hundred percent is is equal? Like, all but the thing is this: because there's a different, there's a there's a grading system. So, are, is it because of laziness that you guys don't go in and say, look, you know what, we've had enough of this. We're gonna make sure exactly what hadith is authentic, and then we're gonna get rid of the rest, so we don't have any more confusion. You don't do that. Scholarship is something that on, is ongoing. So, so, so just like the, the, the New Testament, and I'm not trying to take off the new, but like how, how like new manuscripts are discovered. And so the, it's revised and brought up to date with the latest research. The same thing with like... With but you can't do science. that for Quran. No, you can't. Um, because Allah perfected. He said, I perfected your religion on this day. That means there's no, no more room. So, so there's no more room for anything else. There's a difference between uh, the recitation of the Quran and uh, traditions. Right. Uh, because we don't have that restriction. You do have that restriction. So you have to abide by that restriction. You cannot tell me that because we found this Sana manuscript and we didn't have it before, therefore now it's a... So what you're saying is that you you were believing something that before Sana manuscript you didn't know. So, so you know like God's speech is quoted in the gospel. Like at Jesus' baptism, God says in Mark's gospel that uh, you are my son whom I'm well pleased. But Matthew changes the word of God by saying, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. Yeah. So here you have an example where the word of God is changed mm -hmm. in the gospel. Mm -hmm. So you have Mark quoting the word of God. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the baptism of Jesus where God addresses Jesus, whereas in Matthew it's changed to God addressing the crowd. And you know, for me to get out of this situation is so easy. You know why? Because we never said it's the word of God. We said it's the inspired word of God according to Matthew. So if according to Matthew, if he said, God said, you are not my son, uh, uh, you're not my holy son, or you're not my son, then you would have a contradiction. I don't see it as a contradiction. Both are saying same thing in different words. One is you are my son, yeah. whereas the other way is this is my son. This is my son. So it's not okay. being addressed. You are my Jesus son. And the crowd. Does it change the meaning? It does. How? Because yeah. one is just an address to Jesus, yeah. which no one hears, only Jesus. Mm. But in Matthew, it's a public declaration mm. where the crowd is being told that Jesus yeah. is the Son. But then also it says that everybody heard this voice from the from the sky. Not, not in Mark. Not in Mark. It's okay. Mark is like a secret. Right. So do we just no go by knows. one God? That's why. Okay. So we. Okay. This is so simple. You do this all the time. But you know, it's very weird that you do exactly what we do. But then when we do it, you say, "Oh, you're doing that." But then you do the same thing. So you so have the reference. Just yeah, so I know what you're saying. So what, what I'm saying is like, uh, if, it, it, if it changes the meaning, if, it, if, if, if it's not because could, did, did Jesus know that he is the son of God? Or did he not know that until God told him that he is the son of God? Well, from Mark, he might, might understand it to mean that God tells Jesus and informs him that right. today you so, are my son. So when, when Matthew, God in his pre, uh, through his Holy Spirit inspired the church to put together the gospel, did he ask them or did the Holy Spirit lead them into putting all these gospels together so they can get the correct meaning? It's not, no, because when Mark wrote, he was expecting the world to come to an end. He wasn't expecting the world to carry on for another 2,000 right. years. But then, okay. But when it didn't end, then Matthew wrote his gospel and revised Mark. Hmm. So he added more of Jesus' teachings hmm. and the, the coming of Jesus um, right. is like extended. All right. So were there any people who followed Mark that had a different concept of Jesus as the Son of God than what Matthew's followers did? Or were there any Matthew followers or Mark followers ever in the history? So, so yeah, so Jewish Christian, um, they didn't believe that Jesus was the eternal begotten Son of God. So they believed Which that Jewish, uh, just Jewish believer? Matthew was a Jew, Paul was a Jew. They both believed that. There were a lot of other Jews that believed that. The ones who didn't believe that he was the inspired Son of God were called Jews. Were the ones that Corinthians. When Paul was talking to Jews, this is what he was explaining to them. You say this, don't do that. Repent. Repent means to turn around. Stop doing this Judaism anymore. You need to stop doing that. Come to this. This is over. That covenant is gone. So this is called a transition period. So for the first 30 to 50 years. If Jesus was the eternal son of God. But in Romans chapter 1 verse 3, Paul says Jesus becomes the son of God through his resurrection. Whereas in Mark, it's at, it's at his back. If Jesus didn't resurrect, let me explain that this way. If Jesus didn't resurrect, would there be Christianity? Uh, yes, there would still be Why? Christianity. What, uh, who would believe Christianity if Jesus didn't resurrect? Christianity didn't begin with the resurrection. Of, of course Jesus. it began with the resurrection. It began with when Jesus began his ministry. No, no, no. no. So with the miracles he performed, the healings. Jesus people came. People believed in him. Okay. Nobody, how many people believed in Jesus when he was alive? Uh, maybe hundreds. So it's not uh, it could be more than that, but not many, right? Because he didn't go through all the world or anything. He was just going in that area, right? If he did not resurrect from the, but his whole mission was to come and die and resurrect to show what? Well, his mission wasn't to die and resurrect. What was but, his mission? But he actually even prayed to God. Uh, to, to save him, him, to rescue him. To take, why didn't God rescue him? Cup. Why didn't God listen to him and rescue him? God, God did hear his prayer. Yeah, but why didn't he rescue him? Hebrews, <laughs> no, uh, but why didn't God I rescue him? Oh, did God rescue him? Yeah, God, God heard his prayer ah. and uh, delivered him from death. Delivered him from death. Yeah, you believe said, that? Yes. Indeed. You believe that? So that means you don't believe Quran Surah 3 verse 35 where Allah is saying, I'll cause you to die and raise you to me. Yes, yeah, so he wasn't killed. 
Sorry? Was a, 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 Jesus wasn't murdered by his enemies. Or sir, or sir, crucified. I didn't say that. But God caused him to die naturally and then took him and raised him up to himself. He says, I'll cause you to die. Yeah. Right? Okay. Not, not that the enemies will cause him to all die. Alright, alright. Let's say, Romans. let's, alright, alright. For argument's sake, let's go with your argument. So God caused him to die and then resurrected him, correct? Well, he's not yet resurrected, but resurrected on the day of judgment. So where is Jesus now? So he's translated into heaven in, in a way. Wait, wait, wait. So God. it, okay, now I got it. I'm confused. Because I thought we were on the same thing. Did Jesus die or did he never die and went to heaven? So he passed away. So God took him and raised him up to himself. So are you saying he was translated yeah. without dying? Without being killed. Basically. Without being killed. Without yeah. dying means without being killed. I don't know why you're playing the word game. I don't know why that's important. Dying can All right. be like natural death. Okay, so without being killed. Yeah. But he was he was dead when he was resurrected. You can say he passed away. Actually. I don't know. I, mean, I want to be clear. No, look, this is not like a matter of a uh, very small thing. No, wear, wear this jacket or wear that jacket. No, it's a matter of the whole theology of Christianity and the whole theology of Islam revolves around the resurrection. The whole Christianity revolves around the resurrection. If there was no resurrection, there's no Christianity. Christianity would still exist because people still believed in Jesus as a mighty prophet. If Jesus died, listen to me, 24. listen, you know why Islam survived? Why Islam spread? Because when Muhammad died, what happened after that? What happened after Muhammad died? He had the Khalifa. Khalifa. Yeah. Who were the Khalifa? Uh, you know, the the, the Sahaba. Yeah. What did they do? What was the first battle after Yam uh, what was the first battle after the death of Muhammad in Arabia? What Abu Bakr did in Arabia? What did he do? Apostate war. A war of the apostate, right? Uh, no, it was to do with zakat. Uh, okay, so they were not paying the zakat because they said Okay. So what I'm saying is when Jesus died, he did not leave behind like a a, a political setup like Muhammad did, you know? Like a uh, Khilafat, you know, where so they were fighting each other for the Khilafat, you know, they all killed each other. The four Khalifas were all killed by each other. So, who who killed Abu Bakr? He, 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 he wasn't killed. Okay, who killed, uh, 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 okay, then who killed uh, the second Khalif? What's his name? I don't know the detail. Okay. Umar. Radio. Yeah, who was he killed? Abu al Majusi, was a Persian. He was okay. a who, who killed him? Abu al Majusi. Okay, all right. Was he a Muslim? Was he a Muslim? He wasn't a Muslim. He was a Persian. No, no, he didn't. All right. Was because, any of the because, Sahaba because killed the by uh, Muslims? Khalifa, let me explain. Who killed Ali? Was Ali? I don't know the details. Anyways, anyways, let's let's just uh, that's going uh, to another point. We're not going there. When Jesus died, Christianity would have died because he did not have. I disagree. Man. Uh, my friend, because Jesus' message wasn't his death and resurrection. Uh, his message was to believe in the kingdom of God. It is what he preached and to believe in the gospel. Let me tell you something. When Christianity came to Judea, it was under the rule of what? Uh, the Romans. And were they fans of uh, Jewish uh, preaching and uh, Jewish gods? No. They were they persecuting Christians? Is that a fact or not? At the time. Uh, I don't know that. Okay, so you, if you denied Caesar as God, which the Christians did, you were burned alive, you were fed to the lions. This is all history. I'm not making any of this up. Everybody knows this. Christianity would have died like that under the Romans because when Islam came, there was no Roman Empire on top of Arabia forcing them to leave Islam. That was the situation. They were killing them viciously for religious persecution the the uh, the height of religious persecution was at the beginning of christianity christianity would go away like this if there was no resurrection what made christianity because they saw these people said this man resurrected and he is god and they would die for that and the thing is that you guys should understand the people who are eyewitnesses are not saying we believe that he was God. They said we saw him resurrect. It's called eyewitness testimony. If you go to the court, the biggest testimony is eyewitness. I saw this man come back from the dead. And if you say uh, he's not God, I, you can kill me. And they would kill them. So eyewitness testimony is what carried Christianity through. 
because those people knew Jesus. They saw the miracles. There were thousands of people he fed. There were thousands of people that knew that he raised the dead. Everybody knew that he is doing all this stuff. So they were not believers, they were eyewitnesses. If I believe there was uh, something that happened yesterday, but if I say, no, I saw that happen yesterday, I was there. Those are two different things. I don't believe that it happened. I said, I saw it happen. So the people who were killed, the early Christians, were people who said, I saw this. He did rise from the dead. Who is the only one from the New Testament who, ever, who can claim to have seen the risen Jesus? But the, the, the other... How about Mary? How about John? But, but they didn't write the New Testament. Sorry, John didn't write the New Testament? No, no the book of John, John and the... John doesn't claim to be written by... Okay, John is written by and Revelation is written. Who's, who wrote Revelation? So, so Revelation is um, John the Elder. No, it's John the, uh, the, the Zebedee. So John Zebedee was the favorite uh, apostle of Jesus and he mentioned that in John, his favorite apostle, which is himself. He wrote the Gospel of John. He was the closest to Jesus. He was, he saw him on the cross and everything. So all the disciples were there. Now all the other disciples were hiding. hiding. Okay, if there's a big execution going on in the town, but you are hiding, that doesn't mean you didn't see it. You could have still seen it, but you were in hiding. You didn't want to come out because you were afraid to die. So they were all eyewitnesses to that. Now, the, the crucifixion is something that's undeniable. Because the problem is the crucifixion is it's not a Christian belief. It's part of history. And the, way, the reason I'm saying that is not because Christians believe that Jesus rose from there. No. Or, or Christians believe that Jesus was crucified. No. It's because the Romans said we crucified him. The Roman, uh, the Jewish people, the philo uh, historian said we, he was crucified. The Roman, the people who were against him, who were, uh, who were not Christians, who were against him, were making fun of him and saying we cr cr killed their reader and we crucified him. So these people have no ulterior motive. Like you would say, well, the Christians had this ulterior motive. So they said that Jesus was crucified. No, Quran is absolutely wrong because it contradicts history that we can, there are certain things that you cannot deny. We cannot deny that if he's my enemy, he will say bad things about me. So Romans and uh, Jews, they had no sympathy for Christians or for Jesus. But they knew that he was crucified and they wrote about it. Then, and they wrote negative stuff about it, nothing positive. But what it proved is that he was killed on the cross. That's it. If he's killed on the cross and your Quran is, comes along and says, he was neither killed. And then in the same Quran, in Surah 3 verse 55, Allah is saying to Jesus, I will put you to sleep and I will uh, cause you to die and I will raise you to me. I will do it. That means that you will die. When you ask them, they say, well, he never died. He was taken up in heaven. If he never died, then why is Allah saying, I'll cause you to die and break you to heaven? These are things that I, I'm going up. Why am I wasting my breath here every day or every Sunday actually? It's because these are very easy things to understand. It's not like these are very complicated things that I'm talking by some kind of philosophy. No, I'm just saying this is very simple. It's in their Quran. Anybody can go to Quran.com, pick up this verse, translate it into Google, go to an Arab who's not biased. And uh, whenever I've talked to any Arab here, they say, well, it says it'll cause you to die. When I talk to some, not my brother here, but when I talk to some other Muslim, they say, they say, no, 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 it just says, I'll take you to me. That whole, it's not a mistranslation. The whole thing has been lifted out. It's been omitted. And that's the whole problem. So to say that, well, Paul didn't believe this or that, Paul died for this belief. He was beheaded for this. Belief. He was sincere. So, so you know you can be sincerely wrong as well. No, no, no. You can't look okay, on your belief. Look, there are people. Okay, so let me clear this up. I'm not doing it to be on this video anyway. Oh, you got his video. You got his video too. He's got your video on there. Why you guys are upset with him, man? Why are you upset with him? You put the video up, and now we're talking on the video, and you're upset with it. Okay, my friend, listen. Okay, don't don't interrupt the video, man. I never interrupt your video like this. Are you trying to? Are they trying to harass you? Why are you harassing my my debater, man? Why are you harassing him? Why are you taking him away? Why are you telling him don't talk to him? Why? They're just saying you're, they're just saying you're speaking for too long, and I'm speaking. Why? 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 They are here till ten o'clock normally. 
That's how long they stay here. All right. This is what happens with this is Sam Dawa and his uh, buddy. It's mini me. The Sam Dawa and mini me are here, and they're telling him don't talk to him too long. We already got this very clear, so clear. Don't be a hacker. Don't be a hackler. Come on, man. Stop it. Don't be a hackler. If you are a homeless, you can stay here. I don't have any problem. Okay. But we have family. We have no. You stay here till 10 o'clock to make your video with the, all this Iraq. You do it all the time. Don't. Don't. You're a hypocrite. Sorry. Chicken, okay, chicken, forget chicken, it, forget chicken, it. Don't waste my time, chicken, don't waste my time. Chicken, Jesus chicken, was killed on the cross. Chicken. That's something that we cannot escape. If you say that, okay, thank you. Thank you, Naz. Next time. Yeah, we, just, we're going to end it here because these people are sabotaged by this guy right here. Look at him, this Sam Dawa. He sabotaged my video. He, he's there till 10 o'clock normally when he wants to be. Thank you, thank you, Naz. It's nothing against you. Thank you. All right, we're out. You see what happens with the Dawah team. They're just out of any excuse from the Quran. It's very clear Jesus was on the cross. He, was di he died and Allah raised, it to him, raised himself to him. There's no denying that, but they keep denying it. Islam is from the devil. Jesus is Lord, I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.